The other day I stumbled on a video Ken Ham made, in which he was responding to another video in which Bill Nye gave his view on the teaching of creationism to children. I was going to comment on Ken's video, but comments and ratings have been disabled. I wonder why. So this is my response to Ken Ham. It will be interesting to see if it's approved as a video response by him or whoever oversees his YouTube channel. Hi, this is Ken Ham, President and CEO of Answers in Genesis and the Creation Museum. Hi, this is Finlag, President and CEO of the Finlag YouTube channel. Recently, a YouTube video featuring a person called Bill Nye the Science Guy received millions of views. Correction, his name is Bill Nye only. Now, the video was called Creationism is Inappropriate for Children. Well, I really believe we should call Bill Nye the Science Guy, Bill Nye the Humanist Guy. You see, Bill Nye received the Humanist of the Year Award in 2010. Being a humanist doesn't exclude a person from science, just like being a Christian doesn't. For example, Francis Collins and Stephen Jay Gould. If you don't know who these people are, see the links in the description or do a Google search. So even though Bill Nye had some wonderful programs on PBS TV teaching exciting things about science, you know, when he was experimenting and putting things together and so on, and, you know, he did some real observational science there, Bill Nye also has an agenda to teach children not to believe in God. What? To teach them their result of evolutionary processes, that they came from slime over millions of years. First of all, evolution has nothing to say about the general concept of God but it is incompatible with young earth creationism. Secondly, evolutionary theory describes how species which already exist adapt and develop over time. There are separate hypotheses concerning the origin of life, such as a biogenesis. Thirdly, the origin of life on this planet is thought to have occurred about three and a half billion years ago, which is more than millions. If you're going to try to poke holes in science, Mr. Ham, at least try and get the numbers right. In fact, Bill Nye really doesn't understand science. And you do? I mean, the word science means knowledge. And you can divide science into historical science, that's talking about the past, or observational science, that's the science that builds our technology. You could subcategorize science like that, but most scientists don't. He says if you deny evolution to children, they're going to have problems because we need engineers. Well, wait a minute. Engineering and evolution? What has evolution got to do with engineering? You're missing the point, Mr. Ham. Good engineers need to be scientifically literate. Let's see what Bill Nye himself actually said. And I say to the grown-ups, if you want to deny evolution and live in your, in your uh, world that's completely inconsistent with everything we observe in the universe, that's fine. But don't make your kids do it, because we need them. We need scientifically literate voters and taxpayers for the future. We need people that can, uh, we need engineers that can build stuff, solve problems. I mean, Bill Nye himself actually is not a scientist. He studied mechanical engineering, and he worked for Boeing at one stage. You don't have to be a practicing scientist to be scientifically literate, or to present television programs about science. The proof of the pudding is whether the programs themselves and the arguments made agree with the scientific consensus or not. I hope he did not apply his evolutionary principles uh, to any of Boeing's airplanes, because if he did, I wouldn't want to be flying in them. I don't want to fly in something that was built by chance random processes. What do you think, all the parts just lay them out there on the runway and they come together or something? No, of course he didn't apply his evolutionary ideas to his engineering at Boeing, otherwise we'd be in real trouble. Nobody, apart from you and some other young earth creationists, are suggesting anything as ridiculous as the idea that complexity is magically and rapidly poofed into existence from a bunch of randomly shuffled parts. The tornado in a junkyard analogy and the monkey at a typewriter are typical straw man arguments, where it's obvious that the person either doesn't understand evolution or is deliberately misrepresenting it. They miss the point that the theory describes gradual and incremental change over very long periods of time. Bill Nye is really implying that if we're going to teach children creation, that it's really a form of abuse, that creationism is inappropriate for children. Only if you tell them that creationism is science. 
I tell you what is real abuse, and I tell you what is inappropriate for children. When you take generations of kids and you teach them, they're just animals. There's no God. Evolution doesn't teach that there is no God. Evolution is part of science, and as such, it is secular. It's a-religious. But it does tell us we are animals and that we're related to all other life forms on this planet, which at the very least ought to encourage us to treat animals better than we often do. You're a result of millions of years of evolutionary processes. You mean 3.5 billion? You just came from some slime over millions of years. Who determines right and wrong? You do. Who determines what's good and bad? You do. I think those of us who read the Bible skeptically have a better chance of figuring out a system of morality which allows all humans to get along peacefully with each other. A true believer of the Bible must consider stories such as Elisha's insecurity about losing his hair and his subsequent calling on God to kill 42 children with bears, an example of something which is morally good. This is crazy. Murdering children is evil. Even if the story from 2 Kings chapter 2 verses 23 to 25 is fiction. Back to you, Ken. What is marriage, whatever you want to make it to be? Marriage is a human societal construct. It's not for everyone, but in most of the civilised world, people are free to make that commitment if that's what they want to do. May I remind people watching this that most modern Christians promote the marriage of one woman with one man. How many wives did wise King Solomon have? Clue. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 3. You know, it's really people like Bill Nye that are damaging kids. Really? Giving kids an accurate description of what science is, is damaging? Creationists are teaching children that they're special, that they're made in the image of God. Rhetorical question. Do they tell them that this is what we believe, or do they present it as if it were established beyond any reasonable doubt? And of course giving them a basis for developing technology that we can trust the laws of logic, we can trust the laws of nature, we can trust uh, the uniformity of nature. I'm sorry, but I fail to see how a creationist worldview helps us to understand the real world in any way. I really do. And you know, Bill Nye really doesn't understand science. He's called Bill Nye the science guy. He doesn't understand science. He doesn't understand the difference between observational science and historical science. This is a questionable way to recategorize science. Science is based on observations, inference and deduction. We don't have to be watching every step of every process to be able to figure out what happened. If we wake up on a frosty morning, we can confidently say that the temperature dropped below zero during the night. Just because we didn't watch a thermometer instead of sleeping doesn't mean it didn't happen. I mean, he talks about the fact that, oh, we've got these ancient bones, we've got radioactivity. Wait a minute, of course we can observe radioactivity and we can experiment with it. But when it comes to bones, like dinosaur bones, you don't dig them up with labels telling you how old they are or dig them up with photographs telling you when they lived. Nobody is suggesting that we do. The various dating methods for fossil dinosaur bones are rigorously tested and the results all point to the fact that they are millions of years old. If this doesn't fit with your 6,000-year-old universe hypothesis, then too bad. Science is built on reality, not a literal reading of one particular religious book. He doesn't teach children how to think critically. He doesn't teach them how to think about science. He wants to teach them what to think, and he confuses historical science, beliefs about the past, and observational science that develops your technology. He puts those together and doesn't distinguish between the two. This is extremely hypocritical. Bill Nye describes what science is and how it works. He doesn't say you must believe it, or else you'll be tortured forever in hell. And as far as critical thinking goes, I guess that only applies to everything outside the Bible. Let me remind you, the viewer, what it says about the Bible in the Statement of Faith on Ken Ham's website, Answers in Genesis. Its authority is not limited to spiritual, religious or redemptive themes, but includes its assertions in such fields as history and science. In other words, if scientists disagree with Ken Ham's interpretation of the Bible, then, according to him, the science must be wrong. If evolution were true, I mean, it'd be so obvious to the kids that it's true, but it's not. 
Ken Ham doesn't seem to understand the concept that a lot of what we've learnt about the world is counterintuitive. For example, who in the pre-scientific era would have thought that matter can consist of 92 naturally occurring elements, not fire, earth, air and water as was previously thought? Prior to the age of the telescope, who would have thought that we are located on a planet which is tiny relative to its star and very far away? Who would have thought that we orbit the sun? I mean, it looks like the sun and the moon are the same size and go around the earth. Even Michelangelo thought this when he painted God creating the sun and the moon on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. But scientific inquiry proved that he was wrong. The way to convince kids about evolution is you have to do what Bill Nye the humanist guy wants. You protect them from hearing anything about creation, you totally indoctrinate them, you brainwash them. This sounds an awful lot like dogmatic religious fundamentalism. I think I can speak for Bill Nye by saying that we don't have a problem with religion just as long as it doesn't make false claims about science or claim that it is science. To do the latter is to place it firmly into the realm of pseudoscience. You don't teach them to think critically at all. Don't teach them the difference between historical science and observational science. You just want to make sure they only hear about evolution and that's it. Sorry Mr. Ham, but you're wrong. Not only by saying that evolution is all we want to teach children, but by implying that evolution is unscientific, rather than acknowledging that it is but one branch of science. Every creationist who wants to argue this should familiarise themselves with Project Steve. This is a list of over a thousand scientists called Steve, Stephen or Stephanie who agree that evolution is part of science. How many scientists with any name claim otherwise? Creationists, of course, are very happy to teach their children about evolution and teach the problems with it and teach their children how to think critically and the difference between historical science and observational science. Isn't it interesting how Christians are not frightened to teach their children about evolution? Isn't it interesting that ratings and comments are disabled on your video? I've never heard a creationist say, go on to Wikipedia or the National Academy of Sciences website and compare their description of evolution with ours. I've never heard a creationist encourage their followers to see what professors of biology at such reputable universities as Oxford, Cambridge, UC Berkeley, Stanford or MIT say about whether evolution is scientific or not. Why don't they do this? One last thing before I go. In the video, Ken Ham mentions critical thinking more than once. Critical thinking is a good thing, in my view, and it should be applied to all claims being made including science, the Bible, and of course Ken Ham himself. Thank you for watching.